Rise penetrations are built up with only a few components. Rise insert sleeves that are put around the cables to separate them from each other and from the metal frame. These sleeves are available for different cable diameters. Rise filler sleeves to fill up the remaining space in the transit frame after all cables have been put through. They come in two diameters, 1812 and 2719. They can be used as single sleeves or as multi bundles of 10. Finally, each penetration is finished with a layer of 20 millimeters of FIWA sealant at the front and back side. For applying a rice penetration, no specialized equipment is necessary. A steel brush is needed to clean the inside of a rusted transit frame. A pair of cutting pliers is used to cut loose cables that are bundled with tie wraps. Flat nose pliers and an adjuster with a notch of 20 millimeters are used to adjust the set of filler sleeves. A tube cutter to cut the injection nozzles of the sealant cartridges. To press down the sealant in between cables, a special tool is developed. The head is made out of PTFE, which doesn't stick to the sealant. FIWA sealant can be applied with a simple sealant gun, but when lots of penetrations are to be made, a professional cordless system is advisable. A cloth with cleaner to remove dirt, grease, oil, or other residues from the inside of the transit frame and from the cables. For finishing the layer of sealant, only a cloth with water is used, and only in the final stage, perhaps a little soapy water. The ideal transit frame for a rise penetration is clean and coated on the inside. However, transit frames that are welded into the partition earlier on might look like this. In that case, the inside of the frame has to be cleaned thoroughly. With a steel brush or by blasting, the corroded inner surface of the transit should be treated to remove corrosion. The excellent adhesive properties of the sealing system will be diminished by corroded surfaces. Besides that, any dirt, oil, grease, or other residues should be removed from the inside of the transit frame. Keep in mind that a space of 20 millimeters at the front and the back should remain for applying the FIWA sealant. Therefore, the sleeves are 40 millimeters shorter than the depth of the transit. Although the cables can be ducted in random order, a well organized pulling of cables makes the installation a lot easier. The cable should not be pulled too tight, and an overfill of cables should be avoided. There must be enough space to provide all cables with an insert sleeve. The cable tie wraps have to be removed to create enough play in between the cables to enable cleaning and insertion of the rise cable sleeves. Lift the cables to clean the inside of the frame. Especially when the cables have been ducted much earlier on, the inside of the frame has to be inspected thoroughly. Also, the cables have to be free of any dirt, grease, oil, or other residues. Clean the cables over more than the full depth of the frame. Only with clean cables and a clean inside of the frame, a high-quality rise penetration can be guaranteed. It is highly recommended, although not mandatory, to cover the base of the transit frame with a layer of rise multi sleeves. This layer makes applying the sealant later on a lot easier, and it prevents the cables from damaging. Each cable is then provided with a separator sleeve. These insert sleeves are split lengthwise and can therefore be placed around the cables in front of the conduit. Although it doesn't influence the fire rating, the sleeves should not be too big or too small. 
A fitting insert sleeve is put around all cables and pushed into the conduit. Positioning the insert sleeves in the middle of the conduit leaves a free space of 20 millimeters at the front and the back for applying the sealant later on. Be accurate from the beginning on, especially with higher filling rates, it might be difficult to correct afterwards. The remaining free space in the transit frame is filled with rise filler sleeves type 1812 and 2719. For ease of filling, Rise multi filler sleeves in sets of 10 are available for filling larger empty spaces. The ratio of filler sleeves 2719 to 1812 should be maximum 2 to 1, but it is advisable to use a lower ratio, for instance 1 to 1, to improve overall mechanical stability. Single cable sleeves 1812 and 2719 can be used for filling the remaining empty spaces. Use a pair of flat nose pliers to insert rise single filler sleeves in the remaining smaller open spaces in the set of fillers. A very tight fit of the filling is vital to the performance of the sealing system. After the whole transit is filled with rise sleeves, individual sleeves can be pushed or pulled in place with flat nose pliers and with the Bela Engineering developed aluminum adjuster. Before applying the sealant, check if the free space at the front and the back of the set of rise sleeves is about 20 millimeters. Cut the injection nozzles of the cartridges in an angled way to create a medium-sized dispersing opening. This will improve the flow of the sealant in between the set of cables. A 20 mm layer of FIWA sealant is applied at each side of the RISE multi-cable transit. Skin formation of the sealant takes place after 10 to 15 minutes. In case of larger transits with a low cable filling rate, do not apply more sealant that can be finished within this time frame. The multi-cable transit should be overfilled with FIWA sealant because some sealant will be pushed into the empty spaces inside and in between the rye sleeves during further finishing. This will contribute to higher tightness ratings. To smooth the surface of the FIWA sealant, a cloth is sprayed with water. This prevents the sealant from sticking to the cloth. Do not use soap water. Soap water will have a negative impact on the adhesive properties of the sealant. The cloth is then used to press down the sealant layer flush with the end of the transit frame. It is of utmost importance to ensure that the sealant is compressed very tightly so that the sealant is compressed into all empty spaces of the set of rye sleeves. The larger the adhesive surfaces of the sealant, the better the performance of the system. The FIWA sealant between the cables is pressed down firmly. A special tool developed by Bela Engineering with a PTFE compression smoothing part is available. The sealant will not stick to the PTFE. Compression and smoothing, especially in between the cables, is essential to obtain an effective gas and water tightness. Especially when lots of cables are installed, a last check should be made to ensure that the sealant layer is pressed down tightly. Air enclosure in the sealant layer should be prevented during finishing because this would have a negative impact on the performance of the sealant layer under fire exposure. The final surface can be smoothed by hand. Just wet the hands thoroughly with soap and water. Soap should only be used in the final stage and only for finishing the surface. In all earlier stages of the installation, the use of soap should be avoided. Adding extra cables through a finished rise multi-cable transit is an easy job. Cut away the sealant layer at both sides of the penetration with a plastic knife or a hollow punch in a tapering shape at a spot where there is sufficient free space. 
remove one or more filler sleeves to create an opening for the cable to be ducted. The opening should be large enough for the cable with an insert sleeve around it. The cable is pulled through the free opening in the RISE multi-cable transit. Place a RISE sleeve around the cable and push it into the conduit. Add extra single sleeves to fill any open spaces. Clean and dry the newly ducted cable thoroughly and refill the opening in the sealant layer at both sides of the transit with FIWA sealant. Finish the new sealant layer in the same way as done for the initial sealant layer. For A-class penetrations, which are insulated, the RISE multi-cable transit frame needs to be insulated only at the insulated side of the bulkhead or the lower side of the deck. No insulation is required on the cables or the face of the transit.